For six months, we have been following you on Facebook. And I've been praying for the Lord to send this here. And God answers prayer. Praise the Lord, it all worked out. We can be here today. But I must apologize. I'm very loud. If you have problems the ears, they're going to hurt today. And I must apologize. I cannot speak Bokanyong. For 20 years now, I have been preaching amongst the Bokanyong. But I can only speak two or three words. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so I apologize, I cannot speak your language. But praise the Lord, have a translator. And we can hear the word of God. Jesus says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceedeth of the mouth of God. This word is more important than your food. This word is more important than your life. For God's word to be here today. It took the blood of many Christians. They had to die for the word of God. That we could have God's word today. This is the most important thing in this world. More important than money. More important than gold. More important than medicine or education. This is the most important thing in this world. It's by this book we can know the Lord. How do we know one another? We must talk. You must hear. Most of you do not know me. So where am I from? If I don't tell you, you don't know. You may think by your eyes that I am a white man. But you're wrong. I'm Vietnamese. Vietnam. My mother is from Vietnam. My father's from America. If you did not hear this, you would never know. If you just went by what your eyes told you, you would think I'm just a white man. But really, I'm Vietnamese. I eat chili. Lots of chili. If you did not know that, if I did not tell you, you would never know. Your eyes would tell you he's a white man and he cannot eat chili. But you would be wrong. It's important to hear. In English, here is spelled H-E-A-R. 
And they sit there. And they sing. But there's no joy at all. If I look at the Bible, and I look at Christians, it's two different things. That is wrong. If we obeyed the Bible, it became these kind of people rejoicing in the Lord always. Do you know how many people in the world want to come to church? If we are Christians and we rejoice always, do you know when people would come to us to ask about Jesus? In this world, they're trying to drink to get happy. It doesn't make them happy. They're doing drugs to make them happy. It doesn't make them happy. They're looking for something to make them happy. And we have it in the Lord. I was born again 27 years ago. Before that, I was not a Christian. I was a sinner. I came to Thailand in 1990. 32 years ago. To Thai box. The box. Because inside, I used to be filled with hate. My mother's in Vietnam. When I was born, one year later, her country disappeared. The communists took it over. And her country was gone. She was in America with no country. She became angry and very mean. When I was five years old, my father and mother divorced. And I was in the middle. Because they divorced, when my father saw me, he would remind him of his mother, of my, my, my mother. And so he couldn't be around me. And my mother, when she saw me, she would think of my father. And because they divorced, I was in the middle. I was in the middle. When I was in America, America and Vietnam had a war together. Many Americans died in Vietnam. And many Vietnamese died. When the Americans saw me, they were seen as a Vietnamese. And because the Vietnamese had killed many Americans, they didn't like me. And the Vietnamese in America, when they would see me, they would see an American. And because Americans killed many Vietnamese, they didn't like me. I was in the middle. People hated me. So I grew up with hate. And used to fight people. And used to enjoy hurting people. And I came here 32 years ago to fight, to tie box, to hurt people, filled with hate. Back then, because of tie boxing, I was a Buddhist. 
Pra Buddha. And not just a Buddhist. I used to worship spirits and practice black magic to curse people. I was a very bad man before. God is love. I was filled with hate. The opposite of God. And like to hurt people before. And wherever I used to go, there was always a fight. Me, fighting people. But 27 years ago, I wanted to find God. Is there a God out there? who can answer my prayers. He's not in the Buddhist temple. In the Buddhist temple, there's no answer to prayer. He's not in the Muslim mosque. They pray five times a day, and there is no answer to their prayers. I wanted to find God who can answer prayer. I asked God to send somebody to me. 27 years ago, God sent somebody to me with a book. With a book. That had the promise of God. It was Jesus Christ says, What things soever we desire, when we pray, if we believe we receive them, Jesus says, Ye shall have them. What kind of God is this? We can ask and receive. Is God crazy? I can test him. But they are thinner. If it doesn't work, God is a liar. The Bible's a lie. I can prove it. I will tell everybody. If this doesn't work, it is a lie. And God is a liar. You see, I was a fighter. I was going to take on God. But if it does work, that means the Bible is true. That means God is real. That means in my life, I can experience God answering prayer. So I took God to the test. I vowed or promised to God. If it works, I will tell everybody what the Bible says and who God is. 27 years later, I'm still telling it. It works. God's word is true. God answers prayer. 27 years ago, I had to stop boxing. I was making money. I used to fight on TV. Because God began answering prayer, I had to stop and began telling everybody I met what the Bible says. I'm a preacher now. Because God's word is true. And I have learned from the Bible how to always be happy. How to rejoice always. Because back in 1998, my wife and I were in Pattaya, Thailand, preaching the gospel. Now, since I believed in Jesus, 
And no more boxing. I don't have any money. Nobody pays me to preach. Well, how do you live? By the promises of God. For 27 years, I do not tell anybody my problems. I don't ask anybody for money. And I don't hint to anybody. I don't say to this person, Can you pray for me? I don't have any money. I can use some help. I don't do that. For 27 years, only God knows our problems. And because he keeps his promises, I preach his word. Back in 1998, my wife and I were in Pattaya, Thailand, preaching what the Bible says. And there was a Thai church. They let us stay at their church for free. And would feed us. And give us water. As we were preaching the gospel. What happened when we preached the gospel? People get angry at you. People want to kill you. In Pantia, Thailand, there's a lot of mafia. They were not happy with me preaching the gospel. It's easy to preach in here. Because you can't punch me. The but out there, among the sinners, that's where we preach. They will punch you. They will hurt you. You see right here? 20 stitches for preaching the gospel. Three times, I've had people try to shoot me with a gun. Rocks, ice, hot water. I've had it all thrown at me. I used to wear neckties. No more. Because they would pull on my necktie and choke me. It's easy to preach here. It's different out there. And they follow you home. They want to kill you at home. So at this church in Patia, the mafia sent hitmen to kill us. But we weren't there. We were outside preaching. So they told the people of the church. If that fellow keeps preaching, we're going to kill you. The next day, there was no more food. There was no more water. They wanted us to leave. We had nowhere to go. We had no money. The church put us to leave. They do not give us no more food. No more water. They want us to leave. But we have nowhere to go. Because we have no money. So we keep preaching the gospel. When we had money, 20 baht, we can sit on the song tab and go preach the gospel. It takes us 20 minutes. But no money. We had to walk. It takes us three hours. If we have money, we can buy water. Five baht, get water. No money. No water. 
We still went and preached the gospel. And I have to walk back. As we're walking back, we knew a Christian who sold with you. And she would tell us if we're ever in her neighborhood, we can eat there for free. So because we're walking, we went to visit her. She was happy to see us. She gave us quick deal. And water. Lots and lots of water. And quick deal. And we talked. And we ate. And we drank. Everybody's happy. And I think. I don't say anything, I think. If God talks to her and gives us 20 bucks, we can take the song tab. But I don't say anything. Just thinking. So we eat, we drink, it's time to leave. God did not speak to her. We have to walk. While we're walking, no problem. Three hours preaching. But we've been sitting down now. And now we get back up. Problems. Now the legs hurt. Now the back hurts. And we gotta walk more. Quit deal. Tastes good here. But it's not good here. If you eat it, and it gets big in your stomach, and you drink a lot of water, it gets even bigger in your stomach. So now my stomach hurts. And we gotta walk. And then it starts raining. For you, no problem. For me, problem. So I have to wear these. When it's raining, I can't see. I take these off, I can't see. So now I'm tired. My stomach hurts. And I can't see. And I'm getting wet. And I'm getting tired. And the cars drive by. The cars drive by us. And the water hits you in the face. And they are sinners. And they have cars. And I'm a preacher. And I'm walking. Why? Why is it so hard? It's so easy for the sinner. But for the preacher, it's so hard. There is a salah. So we go to sit down. And I'm very tired. I'm very discouraged. I cannot go on anymore. But because every day we read the Bible. And we read the Bible every day. We have the Bible in us. And we have the Bible in you. The Holy Spirit will bring you back to the Bible. Why? Because you read it every day. 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 Streets of gold. No more crying. No more pain. No more darkness. And I can go to heaven. I am a sinner. I should go to hell. But because of Jesus, died on the cross, rising from the dead, I that believe, go to heaven forever. What am I sad about? I don't have money. Who cares? I 
going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. I'm tired. Who cares? I'm going to heaven. And I have an opportunity on this earth to tell others that they can go to heaven or the streets are made of gold. People put on their, on their body today. In heaven, we're going to walk on it. And I get to go there. This gave me strength. This gave me joy. Because we can rejoice always in the Lord. We don't rejoice because of money. We don't rejoice because of blessings. We rejoice in the Lord and what He has done for us so that we can go to heaven when we die. And now I have strength because when you're happy and you have joy, you have strength. If you're sick, and you're sad and you're stressed you will never get better but if you rejoice that's better than any medicine there is it can heal you I had joy now we began walking but now we're walking with joy in the rain happy rejoicing it's one o'clock in the morning. We pass a truck. It looks like nobody's inside from what I see. We walk by it. My wife tells me something is wrong with that truck. It's one in the morning. It's very dark. I think nobody's there. So I think devils. So I say to my wife, we can pray for that truck. As we pray, the door opens. My heart starts beating fast. A woman jumps up. She has very long hair. It's one in the morning. I thought it was a devil. I was going to run away. But it was a woman. She jumped out of the truck. Another man jumps out too. The door is still open. She tries to walk away. This man tries to push her inside. Some hands come up trying to grab her. One. Two. And somebody driving, three people. Three men, one woman. This is bad. I tell my wife to pray. I'm going to help this woman. So I begin running. They're going away. She's walking. The truck is going. The door is open. This man is trying to push her inside. Somebody inside trying to grab her. I'm running. I see everything. She tries to go backwards. But that guy grabs her hair and pulls her down to the ground. She is fighting him. I am running watching this. As she fights him, her hair gets free. She runs to the road. It is very wet. When she runs into the road, another truck almost hits her. Because the road is wet, when they hit the brakes, it makes a very loud noise. It almost hits her. She opens the door, jumps into the truck, tells the man, 
Go! Bye bye! Go! He does not go. The other man that has been pushing her walks over to that truck, opens the door, grabs her hair again to pull her out. I have been watching this. I am very upset on the inside. I don't like when men do bad things to women. I like to hurt men like that. Inside, I am very hot. I am so hot on the inside, while I'm running, I forget to stop. And I ran into that man. He fell down. I fell down. He gets up. I get up. He tells me in Thai, you don't know her. Stay out of it. Leave us alone. Stay out of it. I tell him, I know you. And you're not a Christian. And when you die, as I pointed to his idol under his shirt, his Buddha under his shirt. When you die, you will go to hell. You need to repent. He said, I don't want to hear this. He left. Praise the Lord. But his friend came with an axe. What? Axe. Like a big knife. Or a dog, I don't need it. And he's coming at me now that has to, to hit me with that. Look at my dead head. I'm ready to go to heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say it takes on that. I would just think about the streets of gold. I'm ready. Yeah, I think it does that way. As he's running to me. Look, this was you with the axe in the air. There you go. Oh, let me see. I'm ready. You tell me to take it on. But I wanna die preaching. So he's he's running to me. I say, Jesus. Yes, you. And he went to hit me. His arm stuck. And with the axe above my head, I'm looking at him. I don't see anybody grabbing his hand. But he is fighting somebody that I cannot see. I'm confused. What's going on here? And then my wife pushes me out of the way and tells that man, you're going to die one day. You're going to stand in the judgment. And no matter what you do to us, God's going to judge you. He says, I don't want to hear about God. And he takes the axe and he hits the truck window. And when he hit it one time, it exploded. I did not know that could happen. And all the glass went everywhere. And he walked away. And the man driving this truck, he comes out and yells at me. I tell him I didn't do it. You see that guy? He did it. He said no. Because you helped this girl. It's your fault. It's my fault. And if you don't pay me 5,000 baht, I'm going to take you to the police. I don't have any money. Take me to the place. So we get in the back of the truck. He drives to the police station very fast. Glass is flying in the air. We have to duck down. But that girl came in the truck with us. She was not a Christian. These three men were going to rape her and kill her. She was a Buddhist. Her boyfriend lived in Belgium. 
He was going to come back to marry her. He thought, and she thought, in Belgium, there's no Buddhist temples. So every day she went to the temple to make merit, tambun. But in the temple, the abbot, the Chawan, was not happy. Why did she come here every day? Because the Buddhist monks, they must stay serious. They cannot smile. They cannot show any feelings. And they cannot look at women. And this woman came every day to the temple. And the Buddhist monks tried to stay serious. Begin looking at her. <laughs> Try to stay serious. And he kept looking at this woman. And the abbot was very mad. Those Buddhist monks, they don't wear underwear. I wear underwear. You wear underwear? I'm getting nothing. You wear underwear? They don't wear underwear. They just have robes. And when they see a woman and have feelings to them, you can see it through the robes. This made the Jawat very angry. Not at the monks, at the woman. And he paid three gangsters to rape her and kill her. And these three gangsters thought they were doing a good work. That's why they told me, you don't know her. Stay out of it. But in the truck, before they're going to rape her, she prayed to God and asked God to help her. And at one o'clock in the morning, we happened to be there because we had no money. And we helped her. And now we tell her about Jesus. She now believes. She prayed to God. God sent Christians one o'clock in the morning to save her life. We tell about Jesus. She believes. Praise God. We had no money. We got the police station. The police tell me. You have to pay him 5,000 baht. Or put you inside jail. I don't have 5,000 baht. I don't have 5 baht. The police did not believe me. No, just pay him 5,000 baht. Uh, I don't have any money. The police did not believe me. So we're arguing. But that girl, she called her mother from the police station. Her mother came, paid the police 5,000 baht. Gave us a ride back to the church. We prayed to the mother. She believed in Jesus. Because we just saved her daughter's life. We just saved her daughter's life. If we had not been there, she would have been raped and killed and went to hell. But because we were there, we saved her life. And now she believed in Jesus. As well as her mother. Praise the Lord. We were so happy. We took a shower. Prayed. Read her Bible. Went to sleep. About 6 o'clock in the morning. Somebody beats on my door. I think it's the gangsters. They've come to kill me. I open the door. It's the Christian sister. 
who saw the video. She's mad at me. She says to me, Brother Tony. She says to me, Brother Tony. I don't know what you did last night. But God made me pray for you all night long. And she said, here. And she pulled up 500 baht. God told me to give this to you. She threw it at me. And said, I'm going to sleep. And went to sleep. We learned. How important we learned. How important it is to rejoice. Always. Even in church, you're to rejoice. Even outside, you're to rejoice. It is a choice you make. Are you going to rejoice or not? Yes, you have a reason to. You say you believe in Jesus. You say you believe you're going to go to heaven. Then you should be the happiest people in the world. You say God is your father. Then why aren't you happy? You're going to spend all eternity in heaven? Is it real? Then you would show it. If somebody said tomorrow you're going to America, if somebody said tomorrow you're going to America, you'd be happy today. America's not happening. But we get to go to heaven. When we die, because of Jesus, therefore we should be happy. And we're commanded to to rejoice in the Lord always. Even in church. Even now. Even at hard times. Even when you're sick. Even when you go through troubles. Even when you have no money. You're to rejoice always. And it says one more time. Rejoice! It is your choice. And if you choose to rejoice, you will see how everything works out. You'll have supernatural strength. And then when you tell people about Jesus, they'll want to believe. Because people want to be happy. It's a choice that you have to make. Always. Are you going to rejoice in the Lord or not? Do you really believe the Bible? Do you really believe in Jesus? People can tell. It would show. Let us pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank the Lord for thy word. And we pray each and everyone here may know thee in truth and receive thy power of salvation to have this joy, the joy of salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.